All right, here we go, guys, and we're back at the 2023 Florida Boat Show, specifically the ones in January 1st, Stewart, Florida, then St. Petersburg. I toured both boat shows, and I have lists of different style of center consoles and different size ranges going over them, but I wanted to vote a video on four boats that I thought were just obscenely priced uh, between the two boat shows and i'm gonna just give you a brief description of each one in the beginning we'll cut into the video we'll show the price the specs and then at the end i'll let you know what my thoughts are overall and i really want you guys to comment uh, you know a lot of this is subjective right price is a subjective thing one man's cheap price is another man's expensive price i found all four of these boats Outrageous for different reasons. And we're going to start with an 18 foot Crestliner, an aluminum center console, nice little bay boat, but at 40 grand with a 90 horsepower engine. Yeah, it comes with a single axle trailer. Again, I, I, I was shocked. This was anything over 22, 23,000. Let's dive right into that one first. All right, John Skinner, where the heck are you? A 2022 Crestliner C18 Bay, an aluminum boat, Mercury 90 horsepower, with a caravan trailer, 43,775. And yeah, I mean, this is like an updated Skinner boat. A little console up there, some. Room for your batteries on the side or inside the console, pardon me. Three rod holders on each side, a little leaning post here. A seat there while you're fishing swivels around. Wide boat, lots of room, splatter finish, easy to clean up. That's bolted down or strapped down, pardon me. So somebody can sit up there, you can put your drinks up there. Got huge uh, index storage here, more index storage there. Another seat up here if you want to fish off the bow and sit down uh you can sit while you're fluke fishing skinner um i don't know about the price though <laughs> uh looks like it's it's pre-plugged for i don't know what this is i presume this is this is something power for your uh, trolling motor my presumption don't attack me in the comments if i'm wrong you could somehow put a trolling motor up here too although it'd be a little little awkward yeah i mean i i presume that's what this is um up down trim yep this is uh this is an interesting boat i don't know about forty three thousand. some flip up seats here again not in use step on these use it as a casting platform this thing must fly with a uh, with a 90 on it. The description mentioned this is salt water ready. So this is where we know the lunacy has started, where a really plain Jane aluminum boat is selling for this much. Excuse the wind, guys. I'm going to try to turn my head and shelter us from the wind okay apologies it's not 43 375 it's 39 990 so it's a 40 grand boat then a crestliner c18 day and the second boat on the list here we are in saint pete was the Cobia 262. And I'll be honest, the reason I put this on the list, and I talk about this at the beginning of the clip, I owned one of these with John Sweeney, a, a 2016 brand new bought 256. The 262 is the successor to it. It's, it is uh, six inches, seven inches longer and about four inches wider. But we paid 82,500 with a trailer. Um, and yeah, you, don't get a trailer with this one, and it is almost three times the price. All right, here's the Cobia 262. This is the boat Sweeney and I used to own from 2016 to 2018. We ran it for three years. It was called the 256 at the time. This is the model that replaced it. We paid 82.5 for ours, brand new with a trailer. This is 212, 662, no trailer. Now this is a drop 
longer and a drop wider than ours. Twin 200s, ours had a single F300, just being completely transparent with the differences. Um, big live well in the back we had this really big flip up bolster seat also access to your bilge great access to your bilge we had this as well the chapel storage the slide out drawers really nicely done well finished everything opens and closes so nicely two big fish boxes aft one two three four rod holders a couple of cup holders a grab bar here one two three four five rod holders on top nicely gel coated underside on this fiberglass t-top forward electronics box rear electronics box exactly like our cobia twin screens digital throttles nice steering area enclosed windshield actuator there to let in some air on days when it's sweltering we didn't have this little extra storage area up here again everything opens and closes very easily your batteries are here wide boat we had this on ours we removed it you get right up to the anchor locker super easy this one has a lot of rod holders up and down um big fish box there we actually put our trolling motor batteries in there and let's take a look at the head oh the head now on these ours opened on the side now they open forward and you can see this is a nicely finished area gel coated a head there we have a head to the sink there porthole on this side porthole on that side they open up all right, I, I overcomplicated it. You just really basically close it. I feel like a, a dope now. Let's lock it back up. Yeah. So I always bragged about this being my favorite mid-tier brand, the quality. I'm not sure about the price anymore. This is insane for a, a 26 production boat anyway I'm editorializing I shouldn't be let me know what you think the next one up was one of the first boats I looked at when I was in Stewart the first day before the thunderstorms poured in and forced me to leave early and I swear I thought this was a typo and look we all know boats are getting super expensive but five hundred and thirteen thousand dollars for a 32 fountain just blew my mind. Let's go right into it. All right, we got a Fountain 32 NX. Boat show price, 513. Am I crazy or did these go way, way up since last year? Twin 400, inline six Ferrados. Um, wow. I don't know why I'm shocked at that price, but I am. Uh, flip up bolster seat. Good tackle storage here. A big deep tray little more storage here what do we got here we got a cutting board here that's nice got another little uh, bait prep area here with a little sink you got a side entry door you got two big fish boxes here maybe this has a sea keeper or something let's see wow this is heavy nope this is maybe the heaviest lid i've ever picked up the batteries are here i'm not a fan of that you know uh something happens water gets in the bilge you don't want your batteries there but again and there's no jesus that is not a good design i like this i've never seen this before bolster seating aft facing that's really cool because uh if you're not sitting you get some more space you got more storage down here each side oh boy i'm just struggling with that price for a 32. 285 gallons of fuel. It's got a big beam, almost a 10 foot beam. I'm hoping and praying that price includes these two garments. This is nice. Hmm. I would have would have thought a little deeper, but windshield wiper up there, full windshield. You got an actuator there opening that vent in case you want to get some air. There's your mercury uh diagnostic display nice finished uh, hard top 
two cup holders, joystick or sky hook. So this is uh, an alternative to a trolling motor. You can actually lock in place with that, but the engines work like crazy. So three cup holders here. Let's take a look up here. A lot of fishing room, nice lounge seat up here. Again, the, the trend this year that I'm seeing, these curved lounge seats. Another fish box up here. Storage under the seats here. Yep, not on tension hinges, 500,000 bucks. I want tension hin hinges so I don't slam my hand. Same with this, just slams down. You got your windlass controls up here too. Recess bow rail, let's take a look. How do you get into the cabin? Is it on the other side? I walked by it and didn't realize it. I did. You do have a lot of storage on this boat. See the big fish box there, another fish box here. And yeah, nicely finished area here. Got your fuse panel here. You got that sea deck material here, a nice sink, nice toilet, a lot of room in here. Not, not a bad area. Just struggling with that price. All right. Well, you guys let me know what you think of this price. What do we got down here? Storage. Like I said, let me know what you think of the price. Um, a little surprised. I, I go back through my videos from last year and see what these were going for last year. But I always thought Fountain was competitive from the perspective of, A, they're super fast, they have fishing features, and they're not priced as aggressively as Grady's and Regulators. Uh, maybe they didn't get the memo about the economy and interest rates. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a typo, but it seems like a lot of money to me. And the last boat we're going to show is a small trailer bowl, 8 foot 6 beam, 26 foot long, Sea Cat 262 hybrid, coming in at just under 80000 And the actual retail price was something even more insane in the, in the mid threes, if I recall. Again, nice boat. I'm sure it flies with 600 horsepower, but 280 grand, I don't know. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. The Seacat 262 Hybrid, my review at the St. Pete's Boat Show. Seacat 262. Twin Mark 300s, 279 Rocho price. Twin Mark 300s, got four rod holders in the stern. The twin live balls in the corner. Half facing seat there. You guys okay if I jump on? Nice deep live walls. Again, they're in the sponsoons. Cup holder here, cup holder here. Here's a nice uh, seat here in the back. Little tackle drawer area here. Two slide out drawers. One, two. Slide out cooler here. Cup holders here, four of them. Three rod holders here. One, two, three, four on top. Five on top of that. Christmas tree set up here. You have five, four, three. That's 12, if my math is right. Little storage area here if you want to put some tackle, some sinkers. Nice flip up bolster seats here. Grooved for your hiney here. Lean back. Face the open water. A little, very low in the front. It's a hybrid, so this is more of a, a bay slash offshore boat. You can do both. Twin Garmin's on this one, twin digital throttles. There's your radio. I like the steering wheel, small steering wheel. Lavorsi uh, power handle on it. Big uh, box here. There's another one in the back that I glossed over. This is gonna be access to your bilge pumps and hoses and everything else on the uh, starboard side. There's the pump side, the port side access. You're going to have 
that same big kill box slash storage here. It's gonna be a small head here. Batteries are in here too. There's your wiring, exposed but nicely done. Porta potty, again, very low room here, maybe four feet or so. Little forward seating area. Looks like it does open up. Yes, it does. There's a nice cooler. Put your drinks and your food. More storage up here. Storage galore up here. Yep. Kill box. Storage under here. Storage under there. This is uh, ready to go for a trolling motor. Anchor locker up there. Storage here. Storage here. This is uh, going to take a wild guess that this is... Oh boy, Calcutta trying to emulate, or this is Seacat trying to emulate a Calcutta 263 tackle storage on this side, um, which is a very popular hybrid brand. Uh, I don't know though, a 26 footer for this much money, but that's me. I miss the uh, electronics box up here. That's nice. Oh, it's on a tension hinge in it. Boy, is it tensioned. And I do see a very awkwardly placed glove box here. These are the battery switches I see. Okay. Right, let me know what you think of this and this price. Take a quick look at the price again before we move on to the next boat. Yeah, 279 grand. I don't know, 26 foot boat, 86 beam. I get it's a catamaran, but it seems a little steep to me. And just a quick postscript on this Sea Cat. Um, if you saw the beginning of the video, you saw that I struggled to open and close that hatch. The fit and finish was not exactly top notch. That head compartment, not gel coated. And look, these are minor things, but if you are, if you have an MSRP of almost 400,000 and you're charging 280,000, I mean, gel coat your head. It's not that big a space. Make sure your hatch is closed nice and easy. And they're, you know, obviously not completely aligned well. If I were voting, I would put that Seacat as the most overpriced boat at the show, although that fountain came very close. Again, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.